Okay, so um, I finished early today, so I'm going to make this video while it's in my mind. In December I got um, quite a bit of footage done. Several videos from a big job up near Port Alberni I was involved with. And uh, lots of big fir trees coming down, all with root decay. So uh, one in particular which I made a, its own video called uh, Riding a Huge Tree Top where I uh, top out a heavy head leaner and the stem sways back and forth quite dramatically with me on it. So uh, I had lots of comments, lots of views, lots of comments on, um, on that video. Lots of questions, uh, some speculation, good and bad. So um, I just want to explain in my own words what was going on there because I see I don't know I, I seem to keep answering the same things all the time from people that even outside of the video to contact me personally so I'm gonna speak about it here so there can be no misunderstanding about it okay so I'm just gonna make short files now I can uh, the video won't be too long So let's just start um, by talking about motion for a minute. So when we fall trees on the ground, it's easy to assume that um, the weight of the tree is ultimately all sat on the stump to start with. And then when we fall the tree at you know, ground level or just above, we just probably assume that the weight moves away from the stump as it's all the it's traveling that way it's going to just get less and less as it moves away when you're climbing you get a different sort of perspective because you're no longer um, falling and stood on the ground uh, the ground and the stump and the roots are absorbing the weight distribution of the piece that you of the tree as you fall in it it's now you know stood as part of a tree so when you top in the tree it's no longer you know as as the as the top part begins to fall or tip or move it's no longer on steady ground it's on a flexible thing which is the remaining stem underneath so what happens um, and what you will experience especially if you're doing very tall trees or disproportionately skinny trees is that as the stem starts to fold it pushes back sorry as the top folds it pushes the stem back and then it breaks off and falls on the stem, the stem will wobble back and forth or maybe it'll just go back to where it was you know so um, you know you're probably going to start experiencing the actual pushback perhaps 80 foot and above you'll, you'll, you will feel that little bit of a pushback and it'll fall and you'll move back forward and you'll, you'll jiggle about a little bit so now as you get up in up and above 200 feet or trees that are as tall as that that's all going to be magnified obviously or increased and it becomes you know quite a um, quite a serious uh, sort of factor to consider all of a sudden you can find yourself being pushed back 10, 12 feet or more so you, and you get that huge slow extended stem wobble or when you're taking very very big tops it'll be quicker and, and, and more violent um, so it's something you have to consider always and it's not it's something that I think gets overlooked by a lot of fallers all the respect in the world tree fallers some of them leave comments about 
tree topping then they don't factor that part in that it's you, you're not on stable ground anymore it's it's, it's, it has, it's different you're pretty much making the same cuts but um, with little sort of tweaks here and there um, obviously you're not in a position to move away either you are stuck on that stem so uh, it's always important as well when you're doing that kind of work that you position yourself if not directly behind the stem then at least almost behind it you know maybe favor one side I usually favor one side a little bit just so I can uh, I can see where the uh, corner of the face cut is or the undercut is but um, what you don't want to be doing is, is side on as, as comfortable and convenient as it feels at the time because you can see right into your face cut and you can see as your back cut advances but then when this um, this wobble happens you know and you get pushed back the last place you want to be is on the side so uh, Okay, so we know um, that barber chairs are a very real issue and lots of people have been killed by them. Um, nobody can ever say, it's not really a practical argument to, to make and say, well that was going to barber, barber chair, but I made these special cuts that, that made sure it didn't. On the other hand, you can't say to someone who made these extra precautionary cuts um, you, know, you didn't need to do that because it, it wasn't going to happen anyway you, just, you, you can't say either way it's not a practical argument to make um, so uh, I think um, obviously knowledge and experience is a huge thing um, you know you have to make sure you what you're you're interpreting things correctly we know that barber chairs happen when a tree has uh, can happen or likely to happen if a tree has a very headly heavy head lean or maybe it has some internal splits inside pre-existing you often see that with hemlocks but they, they, they do telltale signs seem on the outside so um, so that was the case here that's what I was faced with a very very heavy head leaning tree and I was tied into a tree beside it because there was actually two trees I had, to t I had to take down there was the one on the video and there was actually a bigger one on the other side that I got to after unfortunately even after so many years of you know videoing with the helmet camera I still do make mistakes and think that it uh, is recording when it isn't so we missed from a spectator's point of view we actually missed the better tree because it was a bigger one than the one I got on video but you know how these, these things happen and it was disappointing at the time but no doubt it will happen again it won't be the last time so, um, so I transferred into the tree that I was going to cut um, made the undercut I prefer to use the Humboldt cut um, I've used both the conventional face cut or the Humboldt cut. They slightly, they have a slightly different effect. But I think the main thing is that whichever one you choose, when you're topping, you want to keep the cut reasonably narrow. When I say narrow, I don't mean shallow, as in not very far in. I mean narrow. Don't make a big open face cut. There's absolutely no point in doing that no good will come of it because you're already going to get especially when you're doing these super tall trees you're already going to get pushed back what you don't want is for that hinge wood still to be holding and drag you forward as well so I make my um, face cut and now this is the interesting part I'm going to move the camera I'll just stop it and move the camera. So we're looking down on this stub here. So this is where I I cut the, the face out with here. And this is where I'll make the back cut. And this is where the hinge is going to form. That's about where I want to get to 
So we know with barber chairs, if you if you not, don't know what I'm talking about, just look online, look on another video on YouTube, barber chair, tree work, and you'll find something which will explain it. I'm not going to go in explain it, I'll just waste more time. Well, what basically happens is, is as you advance, you've, you've taken this front piece out, and then you're advancing with the back cut, with the intention of leaving this strip of wood uncut, but before you get to that stage, if it's a heavy head leaner, the pressure becomes so great on this ever reducing strip of uncut wood that it, instead of reaching that point and folding over, it kind of gets so far and then the whole tree splits up the middle and it kind of literally breaks in half separates one way and the other and, and sort of can collapse down on top of you. It's a terrible thing when it happens and uh, a lot of people have been killed by it or seriously injured so um, it's always something you got to be mindful of you got to take it very seriously there's probably not a worse place for it to happen than up a tree so, um, so what People tend to do, obviously, they will use a bore cut. Imagine this is the, this looks like more like a chainsaw bar, doesn't it? Um, so what they do is they will stand in front of the, of the face cut and they'll bore in right the way in um, and take a chunk out of the middle. So the only piece of hinge that's going to be created is going to be these outside bits here you don't have to go that far but what it does it takes by cutting through this section you're taking the tension out of the middle you're releasing all that tension which would build up otherwise as you advanced this way with your saw so um, a crack or even if there's a pre-existing one it won't kind of evolve now under the pressure so I suppose the conventional way is to come through the front another way is to actually come through the back when you're making your um, your back cut your face cut is already out you make your back cut and at some point you know perhaps you'd start on that side get that right and then you would bore a chunk out here with the nose of the saw, so your nose of the saw comes right out of the face cut and then you'd finish on this side and then you'd have your two bits of hinge there now what I do um, when I'm climbing now just just bear in mind this has got a huge head lean on it, now I made this cut um, on the video, it was probably about 170 180 foot where I made the cut so and it the whole tree not only was the tree leaning but the whole head which was about 45 feet had a big lean on it above where I was going to cut now I'm never that comfortable you know, I've, I've cut countless made countless bore cuts through the face um, for decades but I'm never that comfortable making it or I'll avoid it I'll avoid making one up a tree where I'm going to be strapped right underneath a big leaning head and then I'm going to start boring through the middle of weakening the whole thing more with me positioned right underneath I'd, I'd sooner avoid that so um, so the way I, I do it, it's a little bit unconventional I'll actually make the face cut and then I'll get the saw and I'll cut, make two cuts in the side there of the hinge of, of the side of the tree taking out X amount of the hinge so the hinge now is only going to be is going to be reduced by the time it's been formed it's not going to extend all the way across because I've made these these two cuts here so instead of taking the tension out of the middle I'm taking it out of the edges instead and the thinking being that, you know, if a cut or a split did start to um, to come about in the middle as the tension built up with my back cut, it couldn't really extend past these two points. 
because there's no tension there anymore. It would seem like quite a stretch for it to somehow, you know, start here and then blow out the sides as well. So it's you sort of being contained to the middle if it's going to happen at all. Um, now, like I said before, I can't sort of say one way or the other oh, that definitely needed it or oh, that definitely worked or it, it, it wouldn't have worked or, or whatever. It didn't need to be done. And that's why it didn't bar the chair, because it wasn't going to do anyway. Like I say, it's not really a practical argument to do that. But what I'm saying, and it's not a new technique, you know, a lot of fallers use it as well. They'll Instead of taking the middle out, they'll take the sides out. You know, perhaps in one motion, they'll just come around with the saw, take that side out, and then, uh, I don't know how they do this side. But um, it, it's pretty much doing the same job. You know, it's not nothing is guaranteed. Same as a book isn't guaranteed either. But if if you think about the theory of it, it sort of makes sense, and it's always worked for me. And I've always found it a safer way to work than actually stood in front boring or stood behind with the tip of the bar. And I'm always wary as well with bow cuts. In, you know, that high up a tree in case I throw the chain off. You know, which is another problem then that I don't want to deal with. If I was only 50 foot up, it wouldn't matter. But when you're getting up to 200 feet, it's, I don't want to be sending the saw down and I don't want to be fiddling around up there with nuts and wrenches either. So if, if you've seen that video, don't confuse the side cuts that I make or any other side cuts, because I've done that on a few videos where I've been doing big head leaners. Don't convince or confuse those cuts or mistake them. You know, thinking I'm all I'm trying to do is avoiding the, the you know the the tree sort of peeling out on one side and holding too strong on one side and, and going one way or the other. That's not what I'm doing. On big tops, that tends not to happen at all. You know, if you're doing little tops. There's more likely it's gonna. There's not gonna be enough weight to break the top off, and what can happen is it can sort of peel one way or the other. But that's not why I'm making them cuts. It's to just contain um, the potential for a split to occur as I'm making as I'm as I'm advancing with the back cut. Uh, the only I suppose uh, downside to this cut is that, um, if you can call it that, or something you have to be mindful of, is, is that you are sort of reducing the span of the hinge. You're making it kind of, you're reducing the span of it. So at one, you would have all this wood to steer it at one point, or to keep it going in a given direction, and now you've only got this much. I think it's safe to say that the best wood for steering the tree, assuming it's all intact, is going to be the two furthest points away. Not the middle bit isn't really going to do anything. So if this had a heavy head lean and you wanted to get it that way a little bit, you're kind of lessening your chances of success by doing this. More likely it's you, you may go that way a little bit and then it'll sort of fall off you know with its with its head weight so um it didn't really matter in my situation and nor any situation i've been in in the past that that compromise is worth it well going back to what we said about the the stem being pushed back earlier um what normally happens is that um regardless of whether it's a tall or short tree or whatever um, obviously the taller the tree or the bigger the top you're gonna you know you're gonna feel and experience this pushback you know more obviously um, but what tends to happen is it, it you know it usually the top pushes the stem back to a point and then it breaks and the stem just 
shoots right back and then goes back and forth. What was weird about the tree in the video, and you can see it, and this has not happened to me before, is that not after it, the top breaks off, there was such momentum there that it, the stem carried on going back. It pushed it so hard that it carried on going back and then came racing back. I would say, you know, perhaps there was 20 foot of sway there. Um, it's not so easy to detect with the wide angle lens, but I, I know what 24 is, and um, you can take my word for it. So there was a lot of movement there, but that did surprise me that it didn't just stop at that point and come back. It actually um, pushes it and it keeps going. See, I'm running out of battery, so um, hopefully that answers the questions or clears up any misunderstandings about it. All right, thanks for watching.